Hello everybody, Rope Fox here, and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 4. This is episode 4, and today I am going to begin work on my base area. In between episodes, I already moved all of my animals over, so with that I kind of just pushed them over into the snow there. I think they're fine, they're keeping each other warm over there. And for my storage, like I mentioned, I was worried about this because I'm starting to have double chests full of stuff. So thankfully I was able to plan my base in such a way that I didn't have to touch that, like completely destroy them and then relocate them. I'm just kind of building around them for the time being, but the main concern is my Chidi XP furnace. So it was originally right here connected to this chest. There is the stuff that was going into it. And from what I understand, you're not supposed to break it. So I, I haven't broken it yet. Ooh, come on, Zab. We're slaying horses now? Shame, shame. Like I was saying, I haven't broken the XP furnace. I simply pushed it over with the piston. So hopefully, all the XP is still inside. I haven't checked it yet, but I'll check that a little bit later. So fingers crossed on that because, again, from what I understand, we just can't break the furnace down, which I technically haven't done. But getting to the base area, you can see I've already laid it out right here. I have a 21 by 13 area that I want to use for the foundation of the base. I was going to say the base of the base. So this is going to kind of be the foundation area, and then I'm going to build something up top. I do have some ideas for what I'd like to do, and hopefully I can get some time lapses in to show the progress of the base. Before I get started, I am going to need some stone. So I'm going to place a piston and face the generator in this direction, and then observer... Repeater, repeater, three ticks of delay. Wrap redstone around like so, just like that. And then, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Let's grab some cobblestone. And this is very quick and simple to make. So we're going to place a little hole right there for the water to pour into. We're going to grab our bucket of water. The water has to be on the bottom if we want it to be stone. So it's going to run down just like this. And then for the top... I kind of want to see what's going on. So I like to use glass up top. So I'm just going to do this. Some glass. Break this one out. And there we go. Simple enough. So now we just get lava. We place it on the top like so. And then this is going to turn into stone. That's going to be detected by the observer and push out the stone. And most importantly, to turn this off, I uh, should probably do this. Yeah, so we can see the stone pushing all the way out. We're just going to break it. And then to get it going again, we're just going to break this one. I love these things. They're so simple and very convenient to make. And then I'm just going to stand back here and get all the stone I need. And then if I want to turn it off, we just flip the lever like that. That's going to extend the piston, and then that's going to keep the lava from touching the water down below. So there we go. That is how you make a stone generator, if you didn't know. Also, if you didn't catch all of that, I do have a tutorial on this. I will post a link to it down in the description below. And like always, a card to it will be popping up in the top right corner.
that came out pretty good. I like the way this looks. I wanted to have some depth to the wall, so what I decided to do was use walls. And the nice part about this is we can combine the different types of walls now. So what I'm starting to do is go around and I'm starting to add some of the mossy stone bricks to this build because the idea of my base, just to kind of give an idea of what I'm shooting for, is I want it to look I'm kind of futuristic, but at the same time, I want it to be worn down. Like, hopefully that makes sense. Like, it's been around for some time, um, but it's a little more advanced. So, with that, I'm deciding to add in some of these mossy stone bricks just to give off that appearance. I'm not too sure about the polished deep slate, though. I really like the way it goes with this, but I'm not not completely sold on it yet. I think I can make it work. The only downside is we can't make this look mossy. What I can do though is, and I did it over here, I can add vines. And I may have to throw webs right there just to block it from going down. And maybe in some areas, I'll have it hanging down. But for now, I just want to get the foundation of this done. So with that, what I'm doing is have it up top. So I'm kind of just randomly breaking these out like this to fill those in. I love how those connect. Now for the inside, I have to be careful because you can see right here I have some stuff on the other side. So when we have things on the other side, it is going to connect and you can see that that little portion of the wall there. So it does add a little bit of texture and depth there, but I don't want the whole thing to look like that. So I have to be careful when designing the inside. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Maybe one right there. I want to finish this up and then I'll see how this looks. I really like the way this came out. So we have some good variation in the texture here. We have the mossy stone walls mixed in with the stone walls. And I am going to leave the polished deep slate in because I like the way they contrast each other. And it's just a really nice color palette. And with that, I also added in some leaf blocks. The idea again is to have this be kind of an advanced civilization structure. But it's been here for quite some time. It's going to be ruined. It's going to be worn down. So as I put it together, I am going to probably break it down a bit more. So I want to have the structure of this complete just so I can see what everything looks like. And then from there, I can decide where I want to break things down, make things look a little more worn out. But I think this is a very good start. I finally picked up a pair of Elytra, and that's thanks to Jesse who provided that. And with that, I was just checking out the area. This place has built up so much since I've been on last. Did some shopping. I picked up some, there's my base area in front of me, picked up some sea lanterns. I got some rockets from Beer Sound Shop in the Nether. And then I got an unbreaking book for my elytra because we definitely need unbreaking and mending on that. So I think I am set armor wise. And let's take a land here at the base. I did a little bit of building. In between takes um, I know it's been a couple of weeks so this is what I've been working on try to block it off a little bit and oh it is pretty dark in here I do need to add some lighting but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do much with this area up here because these are walls so anything I put is gonna connect so if I do this it's gonna connect and then it's gonna look kind of weird from the outside right there so I'm not trying to have my whole wall looking like that so what I'm thinking is I'm going to leave a block gap and just build around here because the bulk of my base is going to be underground. And this is where I've been digging out right under here. Again, I'm going to use sea lanterns to light everything up. I'm in process of starting my enchanting table. So I got some ideas of what I like to do. So let's go ahead and work on this a bit more. Now, some of you may have been wondering where I've been. And of course, it was the holidays. So, you know, spend some time with the family. Uh, but on top of that, I had a close family member uh, who passed away the week before Christmas. So you can imagine I took some time away from here to just take care of that. Uh, so that's where I've been. Um, and again, why I haven't had an episode out for the last couple of weeks. So with that, that's actually looking pretty good. So I think, yeah, the sea lantern going in, I really like the way it provides light to the area. Definitely a lot better than these torches here. So yeah, these are definitely gonna go, yeah, I like that. 
I like that a lot, especially with the color scheme. I'm thinking of sticking with the deep slate underground and then also the stone because I want to give off of more, as I mentioned before, uh, a futuristic type build. And you know what? I'm going to let you know where the inspiration comes from. So the inspiration is coming from Halo. <laughs> so my wife and I, we've been playing a lot of Halo Infinite. And this is actually the base of what I'm going to be kind of making my own type of beam tower just because I really like the way it looks. And the goal is to eventually get a beacon because I would love to have a beacon this season. Um, I'm going to build a beam tower at some point and then have the beacon coming out of the middle. So I thought that would be really cool. So just to give an idea of what I'm going for. But at the same time, I do want to kind of add a little touch of it looking uh, run down, just like I was mentioning in the beginning of the episode. So kind of mixing the two ideas together, my original inspiration, what I wanted to do for this season was make a type of ruined um, type area. If you can think of like Breath of the Wild, for example, like just the run down areas. That's the original plan that I had. But then, uh, yeah, just tried to bring the two ideas together. So I think, I think I can pull this off. I went ahead and tore down these walls. I had it all built up, but then I thought of something. This needs a door, especially if this is going to be some sort of ancient futuristic type of thing. I mean, they no one should be able to walk right inside. So there should be some sort of door here. And what I'm thinking is making a three by three piston door using honey blocks and slime blocks. But the only thing is I don't have any honey blocks at the moment. So I'm going to ask around to see who has some. I'm supposed to meet up with DB in the spawn area. There he is, standing right there. Oh, very nice. Yep, honey blocks are exactly what I need. Perfect. Oh, wow. How many am I getting here? Sixteen. That is that is more than enough. Thanks, DB. Now that I have my honey blocks, I went ahead and placed down my pistons and the blocks that are going to be used for my door. So with this, I'm going to make, like I said before, a three by three piston door, giving it this type of sliding door action. And I actually released a tutorial on this probably a year ago, or if not longer. So this is the design I'm using. I'll post a link to it down in the description below. And like always, a car to it will be popping up in the top right corner. But I thought this would be perfect, and honestly, I didn't plan on having this in here. It just uh, just happened to work out. I had the space for it. I did have to sacrifice this. I was trying to avoid having this happen, but for the sake of having a piston door, I mean, I'm willing to live with it. So I'm going to place some obsidian blocks right here on both sides. They're going to run down like this, and... Like I said, I don't want these connecting, so for here, I'm just going to go ahead and throw slabs because they're not going to connect. I'm going to do that on both sides, like that, and then uh, see if I can remember this off the top of my head. Blocks there, blocks here, two repeaters with three ticks of delay. Two repeaters again, three ticks of delay, repeater here, and repeater here, redstone dust, redstone dust on this side going into that block, redstone dust here just to connect it, and a lever to test it. Okay, so if I did this correctly, both of these should close. Let's go ahead and give it a test. Oh, that was a little bit laggy, but it does work. So that is perfect, and you can see how it's going to close, and then we're going to open it. Huh. Interesting. Okay, it closes... but it's not pulling back like it should. So it looks like all my timings are correct, unless this is supposed to be three ticks of delay. 
Let's try that. Okay, we know that works. Ah, there we go. So, that had to be three ticks of delay. Close. And open. Alright, so I have that down. Now it's just a matter of hiding this redstone because obviously I'm not going to leave it looking like this. I need to hide this underground and then I need to hook this up to a T flip-flop so I can open it from inside and outside. The T flip-flop is in place and everything is working as intended. So to get in, we press this button here. That's going to open the door. And then for the inside, I went ahead and placed in a pressure plate just because it's a little easier going in and out. So I just run in, door closes behind me. When I want to go out, step on the pressure plate again. And then, of course, we close it like that. So for the T flip-flop, let me go ahead and quickly show you how I wired this up because I know that's a big question I get in a lot of my tutorials because for those who have seen my tutorials, especially on doors, I just throw a lever down, and the reason is there's a lot of things you can do with the door. So depending on how you want to wire it up, there's really no set way to do it, but I'll go ahead and show you how I did it here. So we have the T flip-flop, so I have a dropper facing up, down below, a dropper facing out, with a comparator that's sitting on top of a hopper running into the bottom dropper, and that's going to run into this block here. And let's see if I can give you a better view. Um, did I break something? You know what? Uh, let's see. Something might have got into the system. I bet it was a dirt block. Yep, that was it. Okay. So, yeah, you have to be careful of that. Make sure nothing gets in there. So let's do this again. It's going to open the door. And, uh, let's see. We're going to break it right here. So we come on to the other side. T flip flop there. Going to this block. Powering this repeater. That's going to power this redstone line, which is going to go to the rest of my door. That's all wired up. And then for the circuit on the pressure plate, that one was a little easier to do. So I'm going to rip out the floor right here and get myself stuck. Oh, no, I can get out right here. So we step on the pressure plate. That's going to power this redstone line. That's going to go to that repeater there. And then let's hop on back up. That's going to run back into the T flip-flop right there. So you can see all of that. So that is how I wired it up. Again, there are many different ways you could possibly wire this up. But like I said, it all depends on what you're trying to do. But again, this is how I decided to wire it up. All right, the door is done, and I started working on the inside a little bit, if you didn't see it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start using stone bricks and mix it with the polished deep slate. And what I like about the polished deep slate is, it, at least in RTX, it lets off that shine that you can see right here, and not with the stone. But like I said, just the idea of my base is to keep it a ruin looking on the outside, like it's been there a long time, but of course the inside has been preserved, so this is going to look, you know, nice and untouched, still looking new for the most part. I'll probably throw some blocks in there just to break up the texture just a little bit, but this is the theme I'm going to go with on the inside. And then of course, as we work on the outside, let's take a look just to recap. I want to go with this weathered look on the outside. I got some vines growing. Those have been growing quite a bit. Try to stop it with the uh, with the string there. Growing the vines here. And like you saw earlier on, kind of have this overgrowth going on the outside. But like you said, oh, and I did get some bees. I just need to get some honeycombs so I can make my own bee farm. That way I don't have to bug anyone else for honey when I need it. And then I have it readily available. And then... I think in the next episode, or at some point, I definitely want to start working on this portion of the base. Again, the idea is to build my own type of beam tower, and I think that's going to be pretty cool. Um, as far as the beacon goes, now that I think about it, I'm not sure where that's going to go, but this is the center point here. But there is plenty of time to figure all of that out. 
But with that being said, everyone, I think I'm going to end the episode here. I know it's probably a little shorter than usual, but I would really love to get an episode out to all of you, especially, again, not having the episode released for a couple of weeks. So with that being said, everyone, this is going to be the end of today's episode. I really hope you all enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I will see you later.